Hi everyone, the Code Jam contest is on right now and one of the questions in the qualification round was bathroom stalls. So that was the third question. In that you have this uh, array of bathroom stalls and the first and the last index is occupied already by a guard. So that is the zeroth and the nth n plus 1th index is occupied. So if you have n equal to 8, 0 and 9 are already occupied. This gives you an array of n bathroom stalls in which k people will be entering. So if you have ever been to a bathroom, then k, uh, when a person enters, they want to be as far away as possible from both the people. So simply put, they want to maximize the minimum distance between the leftmost and the rightmost person. Right? Not simply put, but mathematically put. So, if the first person enters this, uh, this bathroom, they'll go right in the middle and they'll go for four. So that's over here. And why did I choose four and not five? Although both of them have the maximum distance the same, the maximizing the minimum distance. Uh, it's asked that if both of them have the same you know, uh, minimum distance, then you choose the one with the lower index. And there is another condition that in case there is a tie, then you also go for, so this is the first condition, the most important condition, you maximize the minimum among the two. If this is the same, then you maximize the maximum among the two. Most and right most. So we'll see this condition coming into play in just some time. And the third condition is minimum among left and right. I mean the minimum index is you want to minimize the index at which you are. That's why we chose 4 instead of 5. Right? Let's say uh, the second person comes in now. This segment is not as big as this one, so you come here, and then you choose six because this index is smaller than the than seven. So, right now, this bathroom is also occupied. What about the next person? They choose this segment because that's larger, and it's over here that you choose two. That's nice. Now, again, uh, when the next person comes in, although the Maximum among the minimum is the same everywhere. It's zero. So here you have one person just next to you. Here you have another person, another person. Here also you have a person next to you and here also you have a person next to you. Now the second condition comes into play. Maximize the maximum. So over here the maximum is one. Everywhere else the maximum is zero. So you choose this stall and that will get occupied. So how many have you occupied till now? One, two, three, four. Yeah, so for k equal to four, this would be the end scenario and what you need to answer is that when the kth person needs to make this choice, this difficult choice of choosing a bathroom stall, you need to say what is the minimum amongst the minimum among leftmost and rightmost and the maximum among the leftmost and rightmost. These two things need to be printed out for the kth person's choice and k will be given to you. Okay, so there are a few things to notice here. When a person enters this bathroom, they look at a set of segments and they have to make a choice. Okay, so over here you see a segment from bathroom stall 1 and you see a segment from bathroom stall 3 up to 6. So these are the two segments that you have and a person who's entering this bathroom will make the logical choice of always choosing the largest segment that is available to them. Okay, the reason being that if you are one away from this person, so mathematically if you, if you choose a position x relative to a segment l comma r, then you are standing at position l plus x, that's your index, and the distances you have from left and right is x is your distance from left and r minus L minus X is your, is your distance from right. So if you choose a larger segment, 
and stand at the same position x, which is, let's say this is, uh, let's call this PQ. So P and Q are two indexes now. You are again standing relative to them at position x. That is equal to P plus x is where you are standing, which gives you distance x over here again. That's fine. But what do you have here? You have Q minus What's this? P minus x. Yeah. So the minus x quantities are the same. Q minus P is larger. Like we said, this segment is larger. So this quantity, the second, the second part, has increased. And that's always good for you because you are taking the, min the minimum amongst these two. So if you can increase any of the quantities, it's not going to hurt you. It might help you. And that's the reason why you will always choose the largest segment available to you. Similarly, you can logically think of this, uh, you are trying to maximize amongst the minimum quantities. To do this, you need to choose the center of the segment. Okay. So if this segment has four stalls, then you will be going to the center, you will be going to the second or the third stall. But because the question specifically says that if you have a choice between the second and the third, then you choose the lower index. So we'll be going at stall number four. So this is where you'll be going in case you have these two segments to choose from. Now the question has changed a little bit. Four is no longer available to us and the next person who will be entering this bathroom will have stall number one as a segment, stall number three as a segment and stalls from five to six as another segment. So we are seeing a pattern. Our strategy is clear. We come in, we go for the largest segment, choose the center, occupy that and break that given segment into two smaller ones, into two halves. Okay, if, if it's an even segment, segment of even size, then it is broken into an odd and even segment. This is the odd one, this is the even one. In case it is an odd segment, it will be broken into two even segments. So, what do you do? And probably the simplest approach is to use a priority queue. So, what are the priorities of the elements in this queue? They are going to be sorted according to their size. So, the larger segments are going to be at the front of the queue. You're, you're ready to access them quickly. And if they are equally large, then you choose the segment starting with the smaller index. The reason for that is because if you have a left and a if, if you have two indexes to choose from, you always choose a smaller one. So if the left index is smaller, that guarantees you that uh, the center of the queue will have a smaller index than the other one. Okay, you can, you can work that part out. But here's your priority queue. These are the indexes in the priority queue. And technically this queue can be as large as n itself, but uh, we'll keep it nice. So to initialize this, you need the first segment that you have, which is from 1 to 6. So there's an object, 1 to 6 is the segment that you have right now in your queue. Now the first person comes in, they go at the top of the priority queue and they see 1 comma 6. What do they do? They break this segment into two smaller pieces after choosing a particular middle. So the middle is chosen this way, 6 plus 1 by 2, which gives you 3. This is integer division by the way. So the third index is now occupied. And what happens to this segment? It breaks into two segments. The first one goes from, let's assign this a value m, which is the middle. So the first one goes from 1 to middle minus 1 and the second one goes from middle plus 1 to whatever rightmost index it had earlier. So there was 6 over here. Okay, so what do we have? We have 1 comma m minus 1 which is 3 minus 1 which is 2 and m plus 1 comma 6 so that is 3 plus 1 which is 4 comma 6. These are the two segments which are inserted in the queue and now they need to be sorted. So 1, 2 and 4, 6 is what you have. The size of this segment, 1, 2, 
is equal to 2, which is 2 plus 2 minus 1 actually, 2 minus 1 plus 1, which is 2, and this is equal to 6 minus 4 plus 1, which is 3. Okay. So this segment is larger, and after sorting, this array turns into this priority queue becomes 4, 6 and 1, 2. Okay. So we are doing well. We have two segments now, and k we have another counter also which makes sure that k is going well or, or you can decrement k so now there's just two people remaining the next person comes into this bathroom looks at the two segments it doesn't really because it, it looks at the largest in your priority queue 4 comma 6 and breaks that into smaller pieces so that is now equal to 6 plus 4 by 2 which is what 10 by 2 which is 5 5 is what we have, so this is equal to now 4, 6, 4 and 6, so 5 minus 1, 4 comma 4 is one of the segments, we push 1 comma 2 here and the second segment will go in here, so that is m plus 1 which is 6 comma 6, so of course we chose 5, so this segment is occupied now. Now again this queue has to be sorted, but more often than not if you are using a language like Java or C++, priority queues are implemented for you and you just need to use the functions that they offer. Alright, so now let's sort it manually because we don't have that function. So 4, 4, 6, 6 and 1, 2. What's the segment of the largest size? This is of size 2, this is of size 1 and this is of size 1. So we have 1, 2 at the top, the front of the segment. Is it 4, 4 or 6, 6 which is over here? Smallest index. Smallest leftmost index to be precise. So this is what you have. Okay. So now k has decremented to 1 and this is the last person who is going to be coming into this array. This, this array of bathroom stalls. They come in and they see that the largest segment is 1 comma 2. Break that. So this becomes 1 plus 2 by 2 which is 3 by 2 which is 1. So 1 is the position that that person will go to. So this becomes occupied and 1 comma m minus 1 what does that give you? It gives you 0. So if the middle is 1 and 1 was the starting, so this becomes 0. And the second segment becomes 1 plus 1, which is 2. And 1 comma 2 was what you had, so this is 2 comma 2. So what does 1 comma 0 mean? It means that the right index is larger than the left index such a segment is not possible unless you are going for negative bathrooms uh, so this segment will be discarded it's it's actually kicked out of the queue when this happens okay in fact you don't technically need to kick it out because uh, the size is negative and so it will be pushed far back into the queue and you'll never touch it but still you can kick it out and you have 2 comma 2 which is the result of 1 comma 2 being broken into two pieces one of size 0 and one of size 1 so this is what you have and now you sort the array but after sorting it you get these indexes anyway because this is the smallest left index okay but k now interestingly has become 0 so what happens then your program terminates and you are missed out you are missed out on something we needed to print out what is the minimum amongst the distance between the left person and the right person and the maximum amongst the distance between left and right. So every time that you are actually doing this, these computations, you need to keep a counter about what was the difference between left and right. So whenever you are calculating m, you also need to calculate m minus l 
and R minus M. So on the very last index over here, we had M equal to 1 and L was equal to, this was the segment we had, 1 comma 2 was the segment we had and M was equal to 1. So M minus L would give you 0. That is the distance between the left person here and you. And R minus M would give you 2 minus 1 which is 1. So that, that is the distance between the right person and you. 1. So what is the minimum amongst these two? 0. So you would print out 0 and another number. So you need the max amongst these two also. Max amongst 0 and 1. That's a no brainer. 1. This would be your final output. And you would require a priority queue to do this. So what is the time complexity of this? For k people, you are doing these operations. So that is order k into something. Into what? Every time that you want the minimum, you are taking that out, breaking it into two pieces and inserting those two into this priority queue. Now if you are using stuff like heaps, then the, the complexity of actually deleting an element from a heap is log n. And also inserting the element into the heap is log n. So overall we have for each operation you have log n complexity and k log n. k can be as like big as n. That's a constraint of the question. So this is n log n. Not too bad, but you can do much better. So that is the approach to the priority queue. There is a more efficient approach which is log n order time, but I'll be posting that tomorrow. So in case you have any doubts or comments about this particular approach, you can leave them in the comments below. Uh, I'll be sharing the link for the code and all relevant links in the description. So until tomorrow, see you.